Starbucks, the next company to run the FCRA gauntlet. Therapists must check out before giving rub downs. An FTC head steps down. All this and much more coming up in today's screening news update. A Colorado man is suing the nation's most well-known coffee brewer, claiming the giant corporation failed to follow FCRA adverse action requirements and refused to hire him because of some serious mistakes on his background check. When Jonathan Santiago Rosario's pre-employment report came back, it reportedly showed arrests for several violent crimes as well as drug charges. Starbucks sent Rosario a letter that said his background check did not meet the requirements. The applicant is alleging the company did not send him a copy of the report, nor did they follow required adverse action steps that would have allowed him to correct the mistakes before he was turned down for the job. Rosario is suing for monetary damages and he has requested a jury trial. Newly introduced legislation in Idaho would require all massage therapists to have criminal background checks. The state does not currently require any background check in order to receive a license, but if the bill is passed, the state's 2,100 therapists will each need to spend an additional $37 on top of their other licensing fees. The state's House Health and Welfare Committee unanimously agreed to introduce the bill. Next, it must clear a legislative hearing. If it becomes law, Idaho will join 25 other states as well as Washington DC and Puerto Rico in requiring the screen. Edith Ramirez, the chairwoman of the Federal Trade Commission, has announced her resignation. Her last day on the job will be February 10th. President Obama appointed Ramirez as a commissioner back in 2010. She became the chair of the Consumer Watchdog Group in 2013. During her service, the agency focused a lot of attention on regulating technology, turning data security and hacking into major regulatory issues. President Trump has yet to name a successor. There has been a long run-up to the change in the Form I-9, and on January 22nd, the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, or USCIS, stopped accepting the old form. The changes in the form are meant to help reduce errors, and the electronic version offers a lot of new electronic prompts and help features. If you use EBI-9 for your Form I-9s, you don't have to do anything. Everything has already been updated for you. And that's all for today. Be sure to join us every week for more news, and be sure to check out ebiinc.com for more screening information. I'm Jennifer Gladstone. See you next time.